it's great to have you back on the show. Thank you for joining us again. So let's get to these uh, these arms of yours. Yeah. You've got both, a different part of each arm is broken, I believe. Is yeah, that right? I broke my rib as well. So I broke my wrist, my elbow, and my rib. Wow, how'd that happen? I uh, came off a bike. Okay. Look quite fast. A motorbike or a bicycle? Pe a pedal bike? Pedal bike, yeah. <laughs> Where what? Well, I was in okay, Suffolk. so where, you in Suffolk? What going yeah. down a really steep hill? I imagine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. dangerous. <laughs> thing is, the thing is, like when it happened, like I got up and I was like, that hurt, and then <laughs> cycled to the pub, and then wow. went home, went to sleep, and then woke up at like five o'clock in the morning, like in a lot in of pain. Agony. Yeah, and then went to Ipswich Hospital. So uh, yeah, I've had to, I've had to um, postpone a couple of shows, which sucks. It's actually the first time I've ever. Cancel shows, and uh, I did try to say I'll just carry on doing the shows, but uh, they said if I put any more stress on it, I might not be able to play again. So wow. it's good to be sensitive. And how long before you're well enough to play again? I don't really know. I don't really know. They're saying four weeks, and then and then we'll look at it. Well, but I'm glad you're okay. You've got to be more careful, eh? Thank you. Don't just say thank you. Think about what I'm saying. <laughs> well, I'm quite I'm quite a clumsy guy anyway. Like I remember before a show in 2013, I had to have like 12 stitches in my hand because I was playing drums with two beer bottles at about four o'clock in the morning and it smashed into my hand. <laughs> but that's the thing, I did a show after that and it was, well, it wasn't fine, but I, you know, I did a show and then I put my foot in a boiling geezer in Iceland, I had my <laughs> face cut open, like, I've, I'm a very clumsy person. That doesn't sound like clumsiness so much as stupidity. <laughs> the, the geezer thing, because you must have seen there was a boiling geezer, because it didn't, no, it's not it was like, like it, it was like, a, it was like a tiny little pool and I walked up to it and it was bubbling. And, and then it went poosh. No, and then my leg just went into it. It was, it was wow. terrifying. Anyway, let's 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 move on. Well, let's move on. no, this is all we're going to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So listen. Uh, well, the new album could not have been a big success for you. At one stage, you had almost almost every spot in the charts <laughs> was a track from the album. Yeah, because... it was Coldplay and Chainsmokers that stopped me having the full ten. So are you ambitious that way? Are you thinking, oh, why didn't I just get that? Why didn't I have every single spot? Well, no, because you know it was kind of like a loophole that we didn't really know that we could do you know it was it, basically streaming had just become part of the chart yeah and then it they've now changed it so even though you haven't released it as a single it still counts because it's being yeah. streamed but they've changed it now you can't you can't do that anymore so, but so I, you probably have some sort of a record there then no one else has had yeah that, yeah i have uh, the most most top tens of any one album wow in like one yeah. day <laughs> Uh, you went travelling. You did. Uh, you took like how long did you take off in between the second album coming out? Well, and it was te it was technically a year, but I was recording for most of that. So we, I was only travelling for like three three months, like intensely. And you tried to go places where people didn't know you. Is that why? Some of the time, at least. Yeah. Well, I went to countries. I had a sheet of uh, where I'd sold the most records and the least records, and then I chose the places that I'd sold, sold wow. the least. And, uh, but this wasn't to try and encourage them to buy more. This was so you could have some degree of... You, <laughs> well, weren't, you weren't going door to door. Ironically, the country that I went to, I've now... It's now gone very well in and I can't oh, really go there anymore. Which country is that? Japan. So, Japan, you're big in Japan now? Yeah, Shape of You is the biggest selling song of the year there. Wow, well, congratulations. Yeah. That's amazing. And you've written for so many other people as well. You've written with Rita Orr, of course, who's here this evening. You yeah. gave, helped her have her last hit, of course. Congratulations. Yeah. She's, uh, and then... Um, You've also you've written with or for Justin Bieber as well, I believe. Yeah. Now the yeah. Biebs is a somewhat uh, divisive figure to many. I like the Biebs. <laughs> <Because. laughs> uh, but, but do you know what? At every phase of the t time that I've known him, there's n I've never come out of a situation without an awesome story. And he's now totally sober. He's really good. Like, and we and we're in Japan, and he'd done a, like a phone commercial that he probably got paid a shit ton for, and I was doing sort um, of Ramsey money. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> A little bit more, I reckon, but... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, that happened. Um, sorry, mate. The, uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, and uh, I, I heard he was in town, I was doing some promo, and uh, he was like, yeah, dude, let's hang. And I was like, I was like, I don't really want to, like, go out and have loads of paparazzi there. So I was like, well, I know a really good dive bar that's made out of a train carriage that's called Train Bar, that right. when you ring a bell, you have to buy everyone in the bar a shot, and you're there with, like, loads of, like, rocking Japanese people, and everyone's like, yeah! It's a great, fun party. <laughs> oh, man, it's, it's great, yeah. So I was like, we're going there, and he was like, OK, and he turned up on his own. And I was like, this is cool. So we sat there for a bit. He had water, I did not have water. And then he was like, uh, he was like, let's do some karaoke. Like, not like that, obviously, but... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Uh, he, so we went to this karaoke bar and then uh, he sung Thinking Out Loud on karaoke. I sung Love Yourself on karaoke, which was quite fun. And then someone from his record label came and they... I think Universal had built a club in their label, so they were like, come to the club. So he turned up at this club 
which had a golf course in it. <laughs> and uh, he lay down on the floor and put a golf ball in his mouth. And, like, I had a golf club and he was like, hit, hit it out of my mouth. And I kind of look at his security guard and the security guard was like... <laughs> and I was like... <laughs> yeah, and I, I ended up really hitting So you took a the... pretty big swing then? Yeah, and missed. <laughs> Whacked him in the face. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, well, I want to give you something interesting, Jonathan. Let's talk about like gimp okay. masks and shit. <laughs> <laughs> have you have you worn a gimp mask? Is this no, but you know what? My mate, my mate uh, got that. You know that Amazon thing that you can shout at and it orders you stuff. Alexa. Yeah, yeah. that's it. So he he had that and he wasn't in, and uh, I ordered <laughs> him and his wife a gimp mask. Wow. <laughs> And it, and it turned up, and uh, they sent me a picture, which I think is going to be their Christmas card this year. OK, we it's... need to see that picture <laughs> later on. Yeah, I'm not into all that technology. Well, you don't shit. even have a phone anymore, do you? No, and I don't really like... I don't... Like, I still like buying albums and listening to them in the car. Well, here's I... the thing. Let's rewind to the phone thing. That's unusual, and it's hard for... But you must have a phone. Gordon. Yes. Okay. Yeah. It's hard but for you've people... Got, get... He's got kids, though. If I had kids, I'd have a phone. But okay. I don't have any responsibilities. But what do you do when you're bored? Do you not play the Crazy Birds? Do you not have no, a do you know what, on do, do, do you know what? This is, this is the weird thing, cos, like, we're, like... I think my generation was the last generation to not have phones when, when we were younger. Yeah. And, like, you, you both have not had phones at one point, and when you're in a situation where no-one's there and you don't have anyone to talk to, now you just go to your phone and do it. But, but way yes. back when, you thought, and you think about things, or you have a conversation with someone else, or, like, and I just... Yeah, I don't want to sound too high and mighty and, like, oh, this is the best way to go, but, like, honestly, like, I talk to people more and I think more and it's, it's, it's a good no, thing. No, it's absolutely a vital thing. So you've done it for that reason. You've done it really to... Well, no, of... I did it because I don't really like speaking to people. Like... <laughs> <laughs> Really, like I'm, a, I'm, a, I like being antisocial. I have to be very sociable for my job, but I, I like being antisocial. So do you go off away. on your own sometimes? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, I can't really like just walk. Around. No, not in the streets though. Yeah. But have you got a place at home, a room, not the toilet, but a room where people don't come <laughs> into when you're in? Do you have a space where you can say, "No, I'm going to go and do something for me in here. Don't take it that way." Well, you but should... you know what I mean, like, or listen to I music. Can't do that anymore, we... mate. Like, yeah, what yeah. am I going to do? Yeah. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you could find someone to help you out, Ed. <laughs> Justin. Do you fancy it? <laughs> I, I, I reckon he'd say some really aggressive shit as well. Can you <laughs> have it, didn't you? Yeah, he <laughs> well, 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 this evening's taking an unexpected turn. <laughs> it sounds like... I know, if he said he's like, oh, you want to be going, how are you up? How are you up? How are you up? <laughs> Come on. I'm talking to Ed Sheeran. <laughs> it's not all about you, Gordon. <laughs> He smells nice. He smells of cocaine. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, here's the thing about Ed Sheeran, ladies and gentlemen, is he's a, 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 a huge talent, obviously, but a genuinely nice man to bump into. Uh, whenever I've met you, things you've always been very friendly and very sweet and very open. You claimed recently, you said you went through a bit of a bad phase where you kind of lost touch with yourself when you first became famous. Yeah, uh, no, it's kind of midway through. First, I think it it took. I didn't really have any uh, growing up time. Uh, into getting famous. I'd had, like, a long period of growing up normally, but I think you need to, when you get into the industry, adjust to it, and I didn't adjust because I was just currently c constantly working on tour, and you just... All the um, pitfalls that people read about, like, this happened to this person, this... I just found myself slipping into all of them, which so, is So, like, why... a sense of entitlement or believing that you were the... No, this... mostly, like... Mostly substance abuse, I right. think. Mostly so things that were on offer, which yeah. you thought previously you might be strong enough to avoid. No, I'd never, I'd never touched anything, never touched anything. I started slipping into it, and um, that's why I took a year off and bugged and, off. And so, so how did you avoid slipping into it? Did you talk to someone about that, or did you have the strength, the, the kind of inner strength, to say, no, I, I don't want to be that person? Um, no, I just focused on other things. I focused on work, and I, I can't work under the influence. I can't write songs under the influence. I can't perform under the influence. So the more I worked, the less I... Yeah. So, in a way, it was your career, or your desire to carry on with that and to carry yeah, on with and, music. Yeah, and, you know, like, I've, I've worked my whole life to get to where I am, and um, it's... You can't, you can't lose that over uh, something that you do in your spare time. Mm -hmm. Was it the pressure, do you think? No, it was just... I don't know, I just didn't really notice it was happening. It was just... I kind of, like... It just started gradually hap ha happening, and then some people sort of took me to one side and was like calm yourself down, and I was like, oh, I should probably take some time off. Mm -hmm. yeah. And when they first said that to you, though, because a lot of people, especially who become very successful very fast, and the people are worried about saying things to you, for them to say that to you, that took some courage on their part and obviously a, a genuine friendship for you, but were you prepared to listen immediately? Did you initially think, 
No, because, well, man, it's all fun. It's all fun to begin with. It all starts off as a party, and then you're doing it on your own, and it's not. So I think that was, like, uh, that was a wake-up call. And uh, taking a year off... And, you know, I've, I've uh, re rekindled uh, with uh, a girl I went to high school with, and we live together now, and I think that was, like, a real help, kind of, grounding me in terms... Because I've, like... You know, I, I, was, I was a 25-year-old in the music industry on tour, so I needed to... I just needed someone to sort of, like, balance me out. Well, that's nice to hear. That's the lovely thing to hear, and I'm pleased you're through that. And uh, I'm sorry about your hands, but they will heal, of course. Yeah, um, you know, it's, so it's all right. Let's hope that you will be a little bit more sensible in future, Ed. <laughs> Ed, it's great to see you again. Ed, cheer on, ladies and <laughs> gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs>